Hi, Tim Richards here. I'm the author of the Exploring Jazz Piano Books. This is the third clip I've made relating to volume two of the book. One of the most fascinating scales used in jazz improvisation is the diminished scale. As you might expect, this is associated with diminished seventh chords. However, in this clip, I'll show you how to use it with dominant chords and half diminished chords as well. First of all, review your knowledge of diminished seventh chords. Unlike most other chords, these are symmetrical in that every note is a minor third or one and a half tones away from the next. This means that when you invert the chord, it doesn't change shape, it just becomes another diminished chord. So this family of diminished chords has four members, C diminished, E flat diminished, G flat diminished, and A diminished, all of which share the same notes. It follows that there are two other families, B diminished, and its sisters, or brothers, D, F, and A flat diminished, and B flat diminished, with its cousins C sharp, E, and G. Begin by familiarizing yourself with these chords and their inversions in either hand. Don't forget to work out on their arpeggios and broken chords too. Here's an arpeggio of C diminished. And a broken chord. Diminished chords are often used as passing chords. A good example is the tune you heard at the front of this clip, Don't Stop the Carnival, a traditional calypso number consisting of eight chords spread over a four bar repeating sequence. <laughs> The F-sharp diminished seventh chord is a link between the F and the C chord. When improvising vertically over chord sequences like this, it's always effective to include notes from the diminished arpeggio as part of your line. I'll demonstrate this over the bass and drums backing from the solo section of Don't Stop the Carnival, track 23 on the CD. By the way, I explain the terms vertical and horizontal improvisation in clip number three from volume one. You may wish to check this out before continuing with the present clip. The scale that fits a diminished chord is constructed by adding four notes, each of which is a tone up from a note of the chord. This preserves the inbuilt minor third symmetry and results in an eight note or octatonic scale. So here are the notes of the chord. We're going to add a D above the C. An F above the E flat, an A flat above the G flat, and a B above the A. The white notes are the notes of the chord. The notes we've added in between create a scale that is tone semitone alternating. The easiest way to learn this scale is to practice it in three note groups each of which starts and ends on a note of the chord, like this. Remember how diminished chords are grouped in three families, the four chords in each family sharing the same notes? Well, that means there are only three diminished scales as well, because each one will fit all four chords in the relevant family. Once you know it, you can use the diminished scale as an alternative to the arpeggio whenever you have to improvise over a diminished chord in a tune. This will be especially useful if the chord lasts a whole bar or longer, unlike the one which lasted only two beats in Don't Stop the Carnival. A good example is the two bars of E diminished seventh in the bridge of Softly as a Morning Sunrise. You can find this in the book on page 236. However, the diminished scale really comes into its own when playing over dominant 7th flat 9 chords. To understand why this is, 
check out a root position C7 flat 9 chord. The flat 9 is the D flat on top. It's not possible to play this 5 note chord in one hand, so the root is often omitted or moved down an octave or given to the bass player. What you're left with in the right hand is a 3, 5, 7, 9 shape, in other words a rootless shape. And because we're dealing with the flat 9 and not an ordinary 9, this is actually the same as E diminished 7th. So when you improvise over a flat 9 chord, you can play a diminished arpeggio or scale based on the third of the chord, like our E diminished over C. Let's look at what notes this gives us. I'll play the chord in the left hand, and here's the E diminished scale. You can see that as well as the flat 9, the scale gives you the sharp 9. Both sharp and flat 9, in fact. It also gives you F sharp, which is the sharp 11, or the sharp 4, you can call it either of those. So you can use the scale over C7 sharp 9 and C7 sharp 11, as well as C7 flat 9. Please note the scale contains a regular 5th and 6th. Therefore, it'll work well with 13th chords as well, as long as you don't have the regular 9th in the chord. Look out for chord symbols like C13 sharp 11, C13 flat 9, C7 sharp 9 or C7 flat 9, or any combination of these, such as C13 sharp 11 flat 9. Those chord symbols are more or less telling you that the diminished scale is a good choice. For the rest of this clip, I'll show you some tried and tested diminished phrases that you can play over dominant flat 9 or sharp 9 chords. The really cool thing is that any short motif you can play using just two, three or four notes of the scale can be moved up or down in minor thirds without departing from the notes of the scale. Even with just two notes, this is extraordinarily effective. Let's take the first two notes of the scale, E and F sharp, and play them backwards and then repeat the same thing a minor third up. So resolve to F minor there. I've shown the pattern here of a C7 chord played as a shell in the left hand, root and seventh. Note how I've followed through, resolving to F minor by finishing the phrase on a target note for the F chord on the first beat of the second bar. The target note is usually the nearest note of the new chord in this case, the fifth. Now, as we saw earlier, E diminished seven is part of a family of four chords that all share the same notes and are a minor third apart. This means that the pattern we played just now not only works over C7, but also E flat seven, F sharp seven, and A7, all of which should have flat nines. Furthermore, the same diminished scale can be played over the two chord that might precede the five chord in a minor 2 5 1. In a minor key, two chords are normally half diminished, minor 7 flat 5. This is convenient because it means we can play an E diminished scale over an E minor 7 flat 5 chord, that is starting on the root, not the third as with dominant chords. And that scale will automatically have the correct notes for the dominant 7 flat 9 chord that follows it. So exactly the same right hand over C7 uh, or over E half diminished. Just remember, over a dominant chord, base the diminished scale on the third. On a diminished or half diminished chord, base it on the root. Now let's try a three note motif, such as this one. You can start phrases like this in any one of four places, a minor third apart. It's particularly effective going down, like this. If I do that with some chords. Here it is, 
with the same pattern over E half diminished and A7. That's exactly the same pattern I've just chosen to start a minor third lower. Both patterns come out onto the fifth of the minor chord. I hope you're beginning to see what good value diminished phrases are. Because of the minor third symmetry, it's like your ideas are multiplied by four. Any diminished phrase can start and finish in four possible places. Experiment with these to see which sounds best over the chords in question. We can generate another three note motif by taking the practice pattern we started with. Let's play it in sixteenth notes so that it fits into a single bar. To turn this into a continuous sixteenth note line, try starting on the middle note of each group like this. Many great lines can be formed from four consecutive notes of the diminished scale. Here's a basic pattern. Here it is again, tweaked to make a continuous line, resolving to F minor to finish. Here's another motif made from four consecutive notes. This time I'm going to start the phrase as a pickup, so the pattern goes across the bar line and sounds less square. I'm also repeating some of the notes in each group to vary the contour. We do the same thing over E half diminished. I'm going to leave you with one of the hippest diminished licks in the jazz musician's vocabulary. Going back to the two note motif we played earlier, I'll add two of them together to make a four note cell, which I'll move down in minor thirds. Putting that together over C7 to F minor. Once you start getting some of these patterns under your fingers, I think you'll find it will really up your game. You'll also hopefully start to tune in on diminished ideas played by other musicians, whereas previously you may not have been able to identify what was going on. There's a track on the Volume 2 CD expressly designed to help you practice the ideas in this clip. Track 28, page 154, Diminished Scale Workout. You'll be given 12 bars on a C7 chord, followed by four bars on F minor. I'll silence the piano on the play along and demonstrate some of the licks we've been talking about. They're all written down in the book, but I won't stick exactly to the notation because after all, this is supposed to be an improvisation. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> I hope this clip has succeeded in demystifying these diminished scales a little. There's widespread confusion surrounding them. Just remember that all the scales we've looked at are tone first and relate to a diminished seventh chord. If you're playing over a dominant seventh chord, you can find this diminished chord and scale starting on the major third of the chord. In the next clip, we'll look at another important scale which often causes confusion, the altered scale. See you later.